Now, first off, this is not a sponsored video, but this video literally wouldn't have been possible without Reclime Me File Recovery. So if you have file troubles, deleting files, or just formatting your drive with stuff on it, well, this tool will get you not only your files back, but also the folder structure as well. So I highly recommend it. So a big shout out to you guys. Seriously, thank you for everything. So, what is overclocking? Hmm, well, let me put it this way. This is your game. Normal and expected results, but a bit boring. As for overclocking, this is what overclocking does to your game, and this is how your CPU looks like because of overclocking. Okay, well, that's if you're insane. But today I'll go into my own experiences overclocking this. So maybe you'll learn something along the way. But first, what do we need? Well, let's see. Well, it'd be useful to know how much you're using, you know, from the wall. So what meter would be a nice thing. But now, honestly, it's just my personal choice. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What else do I got? Safety equipment. Some tools. And definitely. Well, no, 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 not that. Well, okay, maybe, maybe potato. Well, first we need adequate cooling for our rig. And as it happened, I picked up this thing. And yes, though Enermax Lictech 1 was a big failure, this is the second version. And I must admit that after using it more than half a year, it's doing fine as of writing this. Maybe there is hope for this product and I really hope so too. I mean, my system literally depends on it. Alright, so I need trader per water block to start with. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, ooh, Amazon. Okay, let's see. And, uh, wait, what? Oh my god! It take all my turnip as well! Anyways, if you lack the thermal headroom, well, you may be able to underclock and reduce the heat output, but anyways, today we're up for some gains in games. Now, there are four components for each system that my glorious brothers and sisters of the master race can overclock. The GPU, the CPU, memory, and of course, pota I mean, monitor, yes. So, basically, I have RTX 2080 Ti, and those that know a little bit about PCs could tell you, my CPU is the bottleneck for the system, not the GPU. Still, Threadripper is what it is, and I did a bit of overclocking for the GPU. I ended up doing a rather minimal improvement for my core clocks, which I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, since Nvidia did lock the power output for the new graphics cards. So, did I get any gains in games? Well, uh, not really. Okay, well, yes, if I get the super GPU hungry, game or I push anti-alias super hard, yes I may get a frame or two, which is good, but nowhere near what the older graphics cards could get from overclocking. Oh, and I did a video on the graphics card artifacting, it's a pretty neat video, so do go and check it out. Next, then we have the CPU, which was another interesting experience. So, number one, you have to manually make sure that the Threadripper runs in NUMA mode. So here's the thing, for a long time I was running my CPU in UMA mode, which is the other mode, and I constantly got these frame stutters, a notable slowdown of frames, even though the frame rates were high enough. I felt like I was running a half frame rate or something. Well, that is the UMA mode and gaming. So make sure that you turn it to NUMA mode. And yes, you will lose some performance for multi-threaded stuff, but come on. And really, you're gonna feel quite a bit better in gaming for sure. After that, I was tinkering with CPU multiplier and even base clock. Yes, that thing in my old rig, as a matter of fact, that had i7-4970 gave pretty good boost even though the CPU is locked. But on the horse ripper, well, I corrupted my NVMe drive despite the motherboard having a separate base clock thingamajigger. Yay! 
So, for example, I start a Counter-Strike game and see missing textures. I start a Witcher 3 and see crashes. I start Elite Dangerous and it doesn't even start. Yay! Uh, fun times with NVMe and base clock overclocking. So, um, don't do it. The bottom line, Threadripper does not overclock too well manually. I mean, sure, I managed to get a multiplayer of 42 and stable at that, at a V-core of 1.55 volts. Yay, degradation! <laughs> but seriously, never go above 1.5 volts, lest you do extreme overclocking with, you know, liquid nitrogen and stuff. Instead, what I did was just give power allowance to the AMD Zone Precision Boost Overdrive, and basically cranked up the multipliers and whatnot else to unlock its all limiters. And now PBO is dumb as fuck, like really, just ask Buildzoid about it, but still. Though it says that I allow it to suck up thousand watts, it really will never do that. Just make sure that as long as there's thermal headroom, it will boost. So yeah, NRMAX cooler held its thing very well, and this gave a rather notable performance increase. You'll see in the charts later, but most of the performance actually came from unlocking PBU restrictions and timings on memory. And speaking of that, time came to tinker with memory. First, I put on the XMP profile number one. Then I put on profile number two. Okay, so this shit's out the window like an internet history upon parental inspection request. Well, might as well do it by hand then, but wait! One Osmos has created this amazing tool for setting values beyond just frequency. As a matter of fact, yes, frequency does impact the performance, but RAM timings are just as important. The formula to calculate the latency is on the screen, and you can see that even with a slower memory, as long as the RAM timings are good, you can be way better off. And so, time came for me to test this memory, and oh boy. Just the suit starts. Oh hey, overclocking is a gift that just keeps on giving. Now, while filming exactly that scene, I realized that when putting less voltage on RAM, it was possible to get better overclock. So now I pretty much need to retest everything, but I'll do it later. Right now, let's just go with the things that I got stable and got every chart done. So let's carry on. Yeah, well that took a lot of time. Now in fact, when I had RAM settings near stable, I was able to play the games and do things normally. No errors, but except for world attacks. You see, in this game, when enemies are not spotted, they do not get rendered. And when they do get spotted, it seems that the model or whatever gets called from the memory. In my case, because the memory did spew some errors, the game decided to commit Sudoku once the enemy got spotted near me. Interesting how it works isn't it? Well, of course I went back to test more and more. It took me way too many evenings, but I did it. So, finally, it was the time to overclock the monitor. Now, the thing is, I do have a 144Hz monitor, yet, due to its, uh, great design, only port that could give me that refresh rate is the Dual Link DVI. Okay, Dax, uh, this is my graphics card and, um, uh, Ah, ah, bleh. All right, so I need Active Link Dual Link, Active Dual Link DVI. There we go. That's the one that I need. Yes. So let's just go and see. Uh, uh, but what? Wait. What? What? so near Pondo, Tarpiraises. So that was out of the question. I'd rather buy a new monitor than that adapter. However, I did end up using HDMI to HDMI cable that overclocked the monitor to 64Hz. Then, due to having three monitors set up, I swapped the cable out for this one. Now, this one, and I cannot believe this, overclocked to 90Hz. 90! That gives 50% improvement. And frankly, that was the single biggest gaming improvement I ended up feeling. Seriously, I 
I've forgotten how good the high refresh rates feel. And that was only 90. Anyways, really, the only reason I was able to boost that refresh rate that high on that panel was that the panel itself was able to go way past it already. So that the limiting factor was the transmission rate of the HDMI port on the monitor. And yet on my two other monitors, I was able to get one on the 76 hertz and 65 on the other one. So results will vary tremendously. But hey, it's still worth it. In the end, here's a lot of good charts for you to check out and compare. The testing took forever to do, but for this video, why not? Now, GPU improvement was frankly the smallest one, as I expected because of Nvidia's shenanigans and my PC basically being CPU bottlenecked anyways. But make no mistake, just because I'm not getting super high frame rates or what the hells doesn't mean that my gaming performance suffers. No, as you can see, the thing can easily hold 90 or more frames. The difference is that the lower settings just won't get me more. That's how bottleneck works. Regardless, I can crank up the settings and it's just gonna be fine. But when it comes to productivity, oh man, this CPU is a beast. And sure, yeah, it's not as good as the third gen Ryzen chips, but god damn it, man, look at the multi threading results. AMD have created an amazing thing here. For gaming, it's about average. Oh yeah, but workstation credentials, now those are a feat to behold. Still, in the end, would I recommend overclocking? For Ryzen? Yes. Memory especially, as it gives about the same level of performance as regular overclocking due to how Ryzen chips operate. As for GPU or monitor? Also yes. GPU is super safe to overclock, so there's no reason not to, you just get free performance, really. And as for monitor, well, if you don't mind the visual annoyances like ghosting or chroma sub sample thingamajig whatever, then also yes. Overclocking is a great way to eke out every little bit of performance out of your rig that you paid for and sometimes get something really amazing out of it. And now that's about it. Feel free to rewatch and check out the stats and results and whatnot else. And hey, maybe share the video as well if you liked it. Subscribe and hey, join Patreon if you want to support the content. Maybe visit merch store and other things in the description. As for me, well, it's time for me to tweak some more. <laughs> what do you think? Right, so I was uh, well, preparing to put everything away and so on and so forth, as you can see. Um, I was actually putting the camera away and uh, the bag, I open it, I start to basically just put everything aside and this comes off. The fucking zipper breaks! <laughs> it's just... Come on, you piece of shit! Damn it. What else can fucking break today, damn it? And so we have the Horse River after three months. Now, as you can see, it's still running and doing everything it's supposed to do. And stop closing, you piece of shit! Right. Got the... Oh my god, the damn door is just killing me! Oh, you fucking bitch. Oh, come on! Just want to get some good B reel here. Um, there we go. And now on to disassembly. Ah, this is what happens when you clap the wrong way. Damn it. Well, at least I'm gonna do better than Verge, anyways. Okay, well, um. I'm gonna start with this assembly before I start. I stop the toe! Fuck! Fever! Fever! Fuck this one! You want to see something creepy too? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Not is is to cry beerio. Natura tai kas meu vet. Ne, vis labu parabus.